ready, I'm ready to show a little bit more about this project, Prisces. But obviously, I have to talk a little bit about what happened since the last film, which is uh, lockdown, being listed as a vulnerable person, uh, and then having to work in different circumstances for about eight months, really. Then getting back into my work from my studio, but then having other deadlines with other jobs. So I had a commission which came after Pris his uh, you know, schedule, but then because of COVID, I worked on it, which was based on poppies. That's the design I proposed to the clients. I worked it all from home, from my iPad, uh, created the lead lines as well from home which was um, you know, feasible, and then cut the glass from the workshop when I could come back to the studio. Um, then it was fitted, and somebody came to me and asked for me to play with a set, a little box, which they brought, like a shoe box of uh, little pieces of all sorts, which included works from uh, medieval, a medieval piece, I think, a medieval small, tiny piece, and broken pieces of old windows of all sorts. And they wanted me to create another project. What I chose to do was to simply keep going with drawing from home, and because it included painted, work. Uh, I thought that when I paint Prisces, I will paint their work at the same time. They both have similar techniques. So if I present a little bit more from here, you've got the top, which has this piece here, which was in that box. That piece here, which I think is a medieval piece, which was in the box. A um, little piece, a piece of this one, then that one is in the box, that one, those ones and then those cuts, and those little patterns on the sides. I, I chose to work on it before I got back into Prisley's, simply because both have very fine lines, uh, very fine details for the butterflies or for this. It's the same kind of brushes on nibs. So I, I started with my hair on because um, one of the things I did really during um, lockdown, uh, and at the end of lockdown, was to discover a little bit more the rebrook around where I live, but also uh, a site uh, outside Shrewsbury, which has a lake and a heron in a tree <laughs> on that little island in the middle of the lake. So I was seeing this heron quite often, and after, as I talked about, you know, the poetry of working for Prisces, the heron was you know, a mean for me to link to that, you know, political scenery and thinking of the heron and getting my head back into the Prisces um, as a beautiful site as well with all those butterflies. And so here you've got the, the, the eel that the heron is, uh, has taken out of the water. So the eel in the water before it was taken out of the water. This is all the glass which was cut, uh, displayed on the main easel, from which I will judge you know, the quality of each painting work I will do, um, if I'm happy with everything. Um, basically, um, that photo is just a piece of recording for me to work when I'm sketching, when I'm painting, just to remember the color of the glass if I work from home. And if you look at the details here, it's seen from one side. So that would be um, from one room, really. And then what is on my table here now, it's from the other side. You've got a little bit of movement in my table, as you can see. Very handy. Don't forget the wheels for your workshops. <laughs> It's one of the improvements I did with uh, the time of uh, COVID. I've put a lot of things on wheels. <laughs> uh, 
uh, including my brain sometimes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we stopped the jokes, but we get back to the reality of it, really. This was the cut lines. As you could see on the design, you've got highlights which are in yellow or in green, and that would uh, give me a reference to know if the yellow is on one side and the green is on the other side of the window. It's an indoors window, so I want it to be read from both sides for the clients each day to view it as different stories from both sides. I had to think of each piece of glass as a number, so again, in the time of um, isolation uh, due to Covid and uh, different periods when I couldn't be in a studio, it was uh, ideal for doing this kind of small scale work, which was thinking of lead lines, where would I cut my lead, the reason I will give. It doesn't really look perfect for you to read it, I suppose, as a lead uh, pattern yet. But for me, that's more like a technical reference. And I've numbered each piece. And I came to a conclusion that I've got 213 pieces to paint. No, not to paint them all, but uh, 213 pieces, so quite a bit of work. Looking at the details of the scale of each piece of glass, so you've got quite large pieces, like these pieces here, or that one. You've got medium sizes, but you also have smaller pieces, like this piece, 103, and number 5 there, which is tiny. That gives you a scale of it really in my hand. Why do I have small pieces like this? If you look at the tone or the colors, because my work is semi uh, like a report of wildlife, so some details of the birds, some details of butterflies, insects, some details of plants, but at the same time, it's also semi abstract with the rhythm of a landscape. And that's to give ideas of tones standing out next to uh, green or next to the shade of tree or you know when you have a spot of yellow in your landscape or a spot of ochre orange from the flowers uh, so there would be no paint on it just simple pieces like this so each page would gather a few pieces referring to um, the photographic material that the client gave to me. That's a picture that the client had uh, provided. Um, then I work with this. As I went taking photos on site of flowers, wildlife as well, of my own records, the glass colors, um, some details which uh, would give it in another position with other pieces of glass next to it. And the same way, this is for a page, this is for another page, another page, and each page would have different animals, different beasts, different birds. Yeah, 27 pages, 213 pieces of glass, 27 pages of studies. I had my sketchbook already prepared with the pages, with um, the outer lines of each piece of glass. Each page now is a piece of study, really thinking when I'm painting uh, on paper, how will I work it on my glass, really, to have a render which is as close as possible to what was on paper but at the same time uh, modify the position, maybe uh, adapt it. But this is more like a home study with me learning um, to render like the yellow hammer female or the cinnabar, which is over here. And in the background, above the yellow hammer, you've got the white throat bird 
which is on the other side of the window. And that gives you an example of how people will see a little bit of what happens on the other side. But it looks like it's a bit in distance as well, a bit like, you know, perspective when you're in a landscape. And so you may witness one bird one side and another one on a branch at the back. That's some of the other studies I'm doing. So um, that's a silver studied blue um, larva and uh, a green tiger beetle. My hair and some mushrooms in a setting with a, an idea of a field of uh, yellow flowers, yellow dots in the background. A small tortoise shell which is having a lovely time on the blackberry flowers. Um, where this kind of female would be feeding some babies on that piece of glass. And the background of these patterns here, which is for the small heath. So we've got here the stores, which were photos taken by uh, the client. And I've um, selected uh, that uh, position they had, which was a little bit like contemplative and moving at the same time, with this idea of a playful uh, time of discovery, uh, thinking this, observing what's there, and looking at details. And that would be the pupa of the butterfly, the anatomy of it, which becomes like a landscape. And above it, you've got a little bit of the end of the butterfly with the top of its wings coming just above the pupa and like the butterfly looking at it as well. Before I paint, I usually have a copy of uh, my sketch from the book so that I could you know, move it around my table quite easily. Um, and it's my reference to paint my glass, but also uh, I've got my iPad. I've done a, a small easel position here for me to have my iPad and see the original photo from which I might work. And obviously I'm not copying the picture of the photo in, in exact positions, but it's my starting point. This piece is nearly completed really because that part of the window would be uh, like a nighttime uh, story and a daytime story for the same butterfly. From there, we also have the moth here or the cricket. So another like nighttime story and daytime story with um, a moth and a cricket. So another page page uh, five, uh, which gives um, a few pieces which are here, so that's set. And uh, you've got on it uh, a giant puff ball, so we've seen from quite a distance, and when we get to a close-up of the uh, yellow hammer, the male, uh, get to the wildlife closer of um, blackberry and um, a ringlet uh, butterfly. So um, I haven't really fully finished this one. I'm doing it in two firings. And in the middle, you've got um, a silver steady blue in interactive with ants. Um, I had created quite a lot of patterns and I'm, I'm thinking of maybe putting a few lines and, and a few dots, but really to keep it quite simple, maybe at the, the bottom, like plain, like a, a night ambience or semi abstract ambience, um, and then work on uh, these patterns somewhere else in the window. And above, you've got the six pots burnet, which is here, and a friend of mine. Uh, has seen it uh, on my uh, night box as if it was uh, a surfboard. Do you see the surfboard? <laughs> I like it. Modernity in the window. <laughs> a six spot barnet doing a bit of surf. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Imagination. And that's a storytelling, that window. I love it. I just love working on it. And I'm 
going to say sorry to the clients if I'm taking a little bit longer, but between COVID and personal circumstances and the poetry of the work and me learning more about wildlife as I'm doing it, it takes a bit more time than usual.